So we've just finished flanging up Troy's Tirana, the LH, with a 304. We tuned it last time when it was a 253. Now it's got a built 304, flat top pistons, 20 thou oversize, a nice hydraulic flat tappet crew cam. It's got a MSD fuel injected throttle body, MSD distributor, and a digital 6AL. Lonsdale Engine Works built and machined the motor, and we're going to finish the calibration on it today. We've just grabbed the old reference run from when it was a 253 when we first tuned it as a carby and we made 300 newton meters of torque and 126 kilowatts or 176 horsepower at 5000 rpm so hopefully we do a little bit better today with the 304 so we've just set the timing it's got 12 degrees of base timing a black bush and two silver heavies um, with a total measure of 31 degrees at 4000 revs we've got that little msd atomic handhold controller here and um, we're going to go through and and have a look and see if we can get it running as good as possible. So we've just done a couple of runs with the MSD um, with the 32 degrees total timing. It makes peak torque at 3,700 and 267 foot pounds, and peak power is actually at 6,700 revs at 302 horsepower. Um, the MSD is doing its thing with its closed loop fueling control. It has a slight rich dip in here when you jump on the converter, which it's working on with the closed loop control. But we're going to start off with trying on a one inch plenum spacer and seeing how that affects the power and torque. five runs now um, with the one inch spacer versus our no spacer and because we have no control over the fueling we have to let the atomic take over the first two runs we actually made less power than with no spacer but the fueling was a little bit rich a little bit richer but not heaps richer um, with like 12 twos versus 12 sevens but we've lost torque quite a substantial amount of torque in most places with the one inch spacer we did a battery reset and then did another two runs with the one inch spacer and they became a bit more consistent the peak power became the same sorry about that the peak power became the same at 303 but right through peak torque we've lost well, a decent whack of horsepower six horsepower and definitely eight Newton meters of torque right at peak torque pretty much all the way through until 5700 revs where the power and torque match right again at 6400 we've lost torque and power and then right at the very top at 7000 it's matched so this spacer is not worth running on this type of car so this is the aeroflow spacer we tried it's one inch it's open on the bottom it's a nice cnc machining in there it looks good, but as the dyno results show, it's useless. So we're just coming to the end of our tune now. We've uh, got the mixtures right. We've got the spacer on there, or no spacer, because that's the best power. And we've tried some timing, 10, 12, 14 base, um, with 12 degrees being the most horsepower. So when I go 10 degrees, we've lost horsepower and torque versus the 12. And same with the 34 which is a 14 degree base. So we were right on the money, experience paid off. We should have just left it alone at 32 total, 12 degrees base. 
So thanks for watching my video guys and um, hit subscribe because I have some cool videos coming. A small block Chevy with a Holy Terminator Stealth Carby and a LS1 Stroker on full flex fuel. So hit subscribe and you can see my latest videos. Thanks again guys.